G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today I'm gonna to take you through a video called The Rich Guy Lie, Why Tinder Swindlers and Romance Cons Work. This is on a channel called The Take, huge channel, 1.5 million subscribers. This video is a couple of years old, but I thought it was really interesting. So, let's go. This episode is sponsored by NordVPN. The yeah, takes stay yeah, safe and always fall for the rich guy. Even when there are a lot of red flags, he's a total fraud. This guy is just having a very different life than I ever will experience. The Tinder swindler tells the unbelievable true story of how Simon Levive pretended to be the son of a diamond billionaire to seduce women and get them to fund his expensive lifestyle. <laughs> I mean, it has that for a reverse Uno card, you know? It's not good, he lied and stole money, but, you know? They were trying to do the same thing to him. That's why people go, oh, he's such a bad guy, and he's a con artist. They were going for him because he was smart to give the veneer that he had all this money and he had nothing. You know, I watched that show. It was like he had cars and um, he was showing them photos of him on jets, and they were attracted to that. If, if, if that same guy was um, working down at Coles in the Fresh Fruit Department, they're not going to be all excited about him. So they're trying to rip him off. He just ripped them off. <laughs> Classic. Would it be possible for me to borrow $30,000 and make a make bank transfer while I'm on the phone with him? Surprisingly, after the film came out, the women he targeted faced a lot of criticism as viewers felt they shouldn't have fallen for what seemed like an obvious scam. But in recent years, there have been many examples of similar romance scammers who use the promise of money and status to dupe women into relationships. The corrupt Italian exactly. surgeon Paolo Macro. So what's that telling you? It just exposes how most women think, what they look for status money i think it's hilarious like i don't think it's good that people suffer but to say that they're helpless victims they knew what they were doing they would they, were, they were the mark and they thought they had a mark they thought they were going to get the guy who had the money and that that was going to elevate them <laughs> i can't make this stuff up society is broken sometimes Poor victims. Carini, who convinced journalist Benita Alexander their wedding would be officiated by the Pope. Richard Scott <laughs> Smith, who posed as a successful real estate developer and pilot. Or Scotty. John Meehan, a.k.a. Dirty John. Dirty John. lived the lie as a successful anesthesiologist in order to defraud designer Deborah Newell. Well, he's a nurse mm -hmm. and he has advanced anesthesiology training. People lost $1.3 billion to romance scams between 2017 and 2021, with total losses increasing each and every year. So what is it about a... So the, so the thing is, the rom all the people getting ripped off, the majority of them, it isn't women getting ripped off by men. I think that'll be a minority. I think a lot of the time it's lonely men getting ripped off and giving their life savings to someone who doesn't exist you, you you hear about that sort of stuff you know the guy who he had a ukrainian girlfriend or a thai girlfriend or something he's never met he just talks to her over whatsapp or something and he's sending her money every month it's probably a dude you know i don't talk about that it's about the poor women poor women lost a bit of money because dirty little tender swindler was successful in his pursuits a seemingly wealthy man that blinds so many women to the facts in front of their eyes. Private jets, cool cars, amazing parties all exactly. over the world. It's not fair to blame these victims or simply assume they're shallow and materialistic when Why there's not? a much bigger cultural problem at play here. <laughs> Don't you know that a man being rich is like a girl being pretty? Exactly. You might not marry a girl just because she's pretty, but my goodness, doesn't it help? Here's our take on how our culture has sold women a false dream of the luxurious Prince Charming and whether we can collectively get over this dangerous oh. fixation on the rich guy allure. The allure of the wealthy guy is deeply rooted in our culture. Classic Disney films, some of the first stories kids come into contact with, repeat the pattern of humble maidens obtaining an exciting, luxurious existence through marrying a rich prince. I've never seen so many books in all my life. You like it. It's wonderful. Then it's yours. Cecilia oh. Philhoy, one of the Tinder swindler's victims, even cites Beauty and the Beast as the kind of story she grew up wanting to emulate. I had memorized the entire Beauty and Beast cassette. Exactly. Exactly. They want to be taken away by Prince Charming. Like it's, eh, oh, poor, oh, poor little victims. Poor little victims. Oh, can't make this stuff up. Uh. 
it just sticks with you, like the feeling of a prince coming to save you. Meanwhile, money inspires trust in us. Psychologist Dr. Penny Sue Lores attributes this to the halo effect, which posits that if we see one positive quality in someone, such as wealth, we'll instinctively fill in the gaps. Quote, if we know someone successful, we might also assume they must be intelligent, fair-minded, and politically savvy. Just reading about him? You really got the sense from him that he wanted to help people, that he wanted to help humanity. So, scammers like Simon Levive play act a wealthy lifestyle in order to project- Exactly. Good on him. Good on him. Because you think if Simon Levive was just being good old just Simon, you know, with his normal pictures of him walking his dog or something, he wasn't in Jets and shit. You think he's getting any action? He ain't getting nothing. So he just took it, being a brassy, just to the next level. He's a dirty little steve -o. Take it to the next level. That's what I say to guys. If you're just trying to womanize, People say, oh, no, it's, uh, it's unethical. No, nah, just lie. Make little white lies. Change your job or whatever it is. Just lie. Do what you got to do. Jason Bourne, get in. Get out because they're doing it to you. They're doing it to you. They're looking up. They're, they're trying to suss you out for your financial worth, your status, your prospects. So, you know, play fire with fire, boys, especially on dating apps. Mostly trash on there, boys an aura of importance. When Simon first meets Cecilia, he whisks her away on a private jet. I felt that I would be stupid if I said no. While also acting very busy with urgent work. He starts getting a lot of calls. By investing in creating a first impression of ultra elite status, he quickly earns a woman's trust and affection so that even after obvious red flags pop up, she's primed to still believe in her initial image of him. You trust me and I trust you, so. Of course, we're gonna help each other. It wasn't even a like a question. Pernilla, another featured victim in the Tinder, because she was investing, thinking she was gonna get paid a huge dividend. That's why it's just the same scam. You hear about these guys who who rope these women in and they get money off them. So now I'm waiting for a big windfall to come in. My uh, superannuation is gonna be unlocked. Um, uh, uh, I'm waiting on a big inheritance, it's coming soon. So if you just spot me five grand or you pay for this holiday, it's fine, I'll pay you back, put a little bit of bit of cream on top for you. They're like, yeah, no way, because I think they're going to get something out of it. It's not because they're stupid or unaccountable. They know what they're doing. It's an investment. They're trying to get you. Swindler doesn't romantically fall for Simon like Cecilia, but she's still convinced of his authority because his story seems to check out online. You always Google everyone you're supposed to go on a date with. His father is this diamond tycoon. And since he treats her to the perks of his lavish lifestyle before asking for anything, that authority appears confirmed to her. Dirty John uses a similar technique to convince Deborah Newell, first making claims online and then backing them up with apparent evidence in person, like turning up to functions in his medical scrubs and acting authoritative about his line of work. He said, Jesus, that's, <laughs> that's been a Steve Ozil's excellent movie. Go ask St. Crazy John, check it out. I thought it was funny. Some of it was funny. Obviously not the psycho stuff that he does, but some of his behaviors, you're just like, that is a Steve-O act. Everything right. I liked what he had on his profile. He had his daughters. He had animals. Um, that he was an anesthesiologist. Journalist Benita Alexander first met Paolo Maccarini, the subject of the Dr. Death podcast's third season, on a documentary being made about him. So again, this authority he had from the start of their relationship completely shaped how she saw him. He had this nickname that he was a rock star surgeon and the super surgeon. And I think that came from the fact that he was willing to take risks. He was a cowboy. Bad Vegan tells the story of a stranger romance con. How Anthony Strangis convinced successful restaurant owner Sarma Melngelis to wire him over a million dollars using otherworldly narratives like that he would make her dog immortal. But again, she trusted him in part because he made her believe he was very rich. And she thought he was legit because he seemed connected <laughs> online to her famous friend Alec Baldwin. Is there any chance that Sarma married Anthony no, of course. So much of the Tinder swindler's scheming happened online. He wouldn't have been able to create the illusion of wealth without social media, for example. It makes the internet seem like a scary place, but luckily there are ways to stay secure online. Start by using a VPN, like this video's sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is especially safe because it offers double protection. In addition to all the rich guy worship, our culture bombards us with stories about successful but broken men who yearn for a good woman to save them. She's a small town girl like me, hoping for something bigger. She meets this person, 
then she saves them in a, in a sense. In Fifty Shades of Grey, hot. What does that tell you? You got grown women basing their whole life and what they want to get out of their life on Beauty and the Beast. It's not real. It's like I'm basing my life on Star Wars. I want to go go to the Jedi Academy and have Mace Windu as my Jedi Master. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Wealthy tycoon Christian Grey is privately a suffering mess, so he chooses regular girl Anna because only she gets how to fulfill his emotional needs. Anna taught me how to love. In About a Boy, Will is financially set for life, but his life is empty until he takes on a quasi-parental role to a boy named Marcus and meets his love interest, Rachel. I was in deep trouble. And there was only one person who could movies. Me out. In Indecent Proposal, billionaire John Gage is so captivated by Diana that he offers her $1 million to spend the night with him, but he can't buy her heart away from the husband she really loves, and we're left with the sense that a good woman's love is worth more than all the money in the world. Uh, a good woman? Hang on, she was just in bed with him for a million bucks. What the hell? She's married. Anyway, she's a good woman, though. She never would have looked at me the way she did at him. At the end of The Social Network, the irony is that Mark Zuckerberg has built extraordinary wealth with a social network that supposedly brings people together, but is completely alone himself, refreshing his own website for updates about his ex-girlfriend. And similarly, in Cinema Paradiso, Toto may be a successful filmmaker who's romanced a string of beautiful women, but he still feels empty and pines over his young love, Elena, the one who got away. Allora diceva per cattiveria. Era un bravo cristiano. In the Tinder Swindler, Simon skillfully manipulates his victims into seeing themselves in this female Simo. savior role. Simon pretended he had everything financially, but the other piece of his narrative was to appear vulnerable, so the woman could help him. I wanted to ask you a favor. If you have an American Express credit card, I can link it to my account. The part of Simon's scam that's become the biggest joke is the constant vague talk about his enemies and the photograph of his beaten up bodyguard Peter to convince his marks he's under threat. Peter is down. He sent exactly the same pictures to me, telling me that his enemies had beaten Peter up. But while it seems funny <laughs> okay. from the outside, by this yeah. point in the relationship, his victims are completely ready to step into that familiar cultural narrative of becoming his rescuer. His rescuer? No, they're doing it because they think that they once they get him on the straight and narrow, uh, they're going to then benefit from the proceeds of him being wealthy. <laughs> They're not doing it out of kindness. <sighs> as long as the internet has existed, there have been scams defrauding people with the promise of making them rich. Once every hour, someone is involved in an internet scam. That man is Michael Scott. A lot of them seem <laughs> obvious if you step back and think. Maybe I should feel weird about giving a stranger my social security number. But the guy's a Nigerian prince. But people fall for these scams because they play on emotion, appeal to our biases, and apply pressure to rush us into split-second decisions. One of the reasons romance scams work so well is that dating apps already create a similar environment. Obviously, people bring strong emotion to the prospect of finding love or attraction, while quick swiping and fast-paced conversations encourage instant decisions. A 2016 study also showed that... Poor women. Poor women. Poor women, eh? Always the victims. Tinder users had lower self-esteem and more shame around their bodies, so these apps create a vulnerability there to be exploited. The most important thing that you can have is a picture of your face. And then you have a picture with friends, because it's important to show that you're social as well. Forensic psychologist Dr. Joni Johnson writes, it's emotions and unmet needs that make us vulnerable to romance scams, not logic. It's not how smart we are, it's how successful we are at preventing our feelings from driving our decisions. Simon Levive hooked his victims with the textbook Love Bombing playbook, showering them with expensive gestures and sweeping them off their feet with fast declarations of commitment. She's here, my love, I love you, I miss you, I think we see you. So they'd feel too attached to respond rationally when he suddenly became demanding and distant. To this day, despite the huge reach of the Tinder Swindler documentary, Levive is apparently continuing to leverage the smoke and mirrors of the internet to project his image of luxury and find. Like, he's still not able to do it because they still don't want to believe the truth because they're caught in fantasy land that he's going to be the Prince of Beauty and the Beast. But he's only been proven to be a scumbag. <laughs> but he's still getting away with it. He's world famous for it. Crazy.
find women willing to trust in him. I'm not this monster that everybody has uh, created. They weren't conned and they weren't threatened. Even when the internet's not involved, the rich guy's money can easily be used as a smokescreen for getting away with bad behavior. So stop worrying and let me spoil you. It's documented that high-earning men are more likely to cheat. Blue Jasmine's story of, of a Bernie Madoff-esque financial crook and his wife, who looks the other way, captures how wrong it often is to blindly put our faith in wealthy men while looking down on working class men who make an honest living. God, don't you want to meet some decent man? You no, know, he's sexy and he doesn't steal. As Tinder Swindler and all these other stories show us, worshipping money and lusting after luxury are not the ideal tenets of romance that we should be subscribing to in this day and age. We're at a tipping point when it comes to the rich- That's why guys also need to be careful. A more serious thing, I mean, stuffing around in this one, but it's a more serious thing. Guys need to be careful. They, they get these chicks, the guys that are well-to-do and they don't know much about female nature and all that, and they get sucked in as well. They want to be the Mr. Provider and all that. They might legit be like a Simon Laviv dude. They get one of these women who are just looking for that, and guess what? You can't make them happy. It's the black hole, sucking all your resources in, sucking all your energy in, and they divorce you, take half your shit, and move on to the next guy. Do it over, rinse and repeat. But you can't help guys. Guys will just keep doing it. Each guy in our culture, not only can a performative, lavish lifestyle feel completely out of touch in today's unequal environment. My earring's gone! There's people that are but we're also becoming more discerning about where a lot of that wealth has come from. Billionaires themselves aren't the problem. The real failure is in how our economy is organized. All right, we'll end it there, guys. Thank you very much for watching this far. Um, have a great day. If you haven't subbed, please sub and check out the Patreon if you're interested. Cheers.